Hi, Tony. Hi, Matt. That I didn't. I remembered I forgot to turn the recording back on. So that was where my brain was. All right. Anyway, continuing on on the agenda. Um, correspondence, all application materials are linked on the agenda, like usual. Um, announcements. So I do have one minor announcement. Um, so uh, I think we've actually discussed this a little bit. Um, but Commissioner Gibson um, has resigned from the commission. He has decided to move full time to Rome. So that obviously precludes him from being on the commission. And we wish him well in the future. Hope he enjoys significantly better weather than we're having. Um, okay, moving on on the agenda. Uh, we have open public comment. So if there are any members. Hmm? Go ahead, Meg. Go ahead. There are any members of the public in attendance who would like to speak regarding matters uh, regarding historic preservation that are not on tonight's agenda, please use the raise hand function at the bottom of your screen. Alternatively, if you're on the phone, you can press star nine. Okay, staff sees no members of the public present and would recommend a motion to open and close public comment. Okay. Second. Second. Board. Pardon. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 And staff notes for the record, Commissioner Pepin has joined us at 641. Hi, John. We're going to go to our first case. Yes. It's old, old business. Case number H21232, Jeff Jordan RA on behalf of 219-221 Warren Street Owner LLC. The address is 219-221 Warren Street in the Paul's Hook Historic District. It's a certificate of appropriateness for the restoration and partial reconstruction of the front facade, interior renovation and construction of a three-story rear addition that is visible from the public right of way and altered contributing transitional Italianate townhouse constructed circa 1870. And this application has been carried from the October 4th, 2021 HPC meeting at the request of the applicant. Tony. Um, so prior to Jeff swearing in you and your clients, um, staff just has two minor things to administratively cover on this. Um, the first is that since the application was last heard by the agenda, uh, the agenda, the commission, the ownership of the building has changed um, going from an LLC to sole ownership. Um, they're here with us tonight. So when we swear them in, Liz will cover um, just swearing them in as the new owners, but just staff notes for the record that the ownership is no longer an LLC and does not require legal representation. Um, and the second administrative item to cover is Austin, you were not here for the first um, element of this application. Um, Jeff and Alex and Victoria, if you guys are comfortable, Austin has read the agenda um, the agenda, the minute, I'm sorry, guys, minute. The report, yes. <laughs> and you read the reports. Um, so if you guys are comfortable with it, he's perfectly comfortable voting on tonight's uh, application, as long as we make a motion to accept that. Yeah, I, I believe we're comfortable with that. Thank you. Cool. All right. And I don't, do we need, I don't think we need to make a motion for that. As long as the applicant is happy with it. All right. That's me. might need to make a motion to turn my brain on this evening though. All right. <laughs> In that case, um, Jeff, why don't we swear you in first? Can you please raise your right hand? Thank you. Do you swear our firm to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth to help you guys? I do. Okay, great. And then um, the owners, Alexander and Victoria, correct? Yes. Can you raise your right hand? Do you swear? Do you swear our firm to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth to help you guys? We do. We do. I do. Okay. And just a few. Qu one question. Um, Alexander and Victoria, you were transferred ownership of 219 to 221 Warren Street in Jersey City, block 14202, lot 20, uh, for the sum of $1. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, very good. That's all I need. Thank you. Um, Alex and Victoria, can you just spell your name for the record for Bridget, please? Thank you. Uh, for me, it's A L E X A N D E R, B as in boy. A-U-M-O-L. Thank you. And uh, V-I-C-T-O-R-I-A, 
G O U S S E. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. And with that, Jeff and Al and Victoria, you should be able to share your screens. Um, I don't know which order you'd like to go in, but okay. good to go. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you, Maggie. Um, so uh, just kind of a brief introduction as to what we're going to do tonight and how we're going to go about this. Um, as Maggie noted, Al and Victoria um, are the owners are going to represent themselves with my assistance tonight. Um, two months ago, a little over two months ago, we appeared before you. Uh, we, we had uh, an application in front of you to renovate and uh, extend 219 and 221 Warren. Uh, there were a number of questions and comments that came out of that meeting that we uh, wanted to have the opportunity to, to address. And so we're back here before you tonight with uh, some responses to that, as well as uh, Alan and Victoria are going to introduce themselves and take you through um, some research they've done. So we'll start with um, them introducing themselves and sharing some research, and then we'll go into, um, I'll, I'll show you the updated drawings and um, address the different comments that had come up previously and go through those one by one and show you what we're proposing. Um, so with that, I'll leave it to Al and uh, Victoria to take us all on a, a little history lesson here. Yeah, hi everyone. It's, it's nice to be here in person. Um, I'm Victoria, this is my husband, Al. We've been living in Jersey City for over six years. We're in the Van Voorst area prior to prior to moving to the uh, Paulus Hook area. And we really love it here. And it was an, our intention to, to invest in Jersey City and be here long-term with our families. Um, we might look young, but we are not. <laughs> We've had careers for over 20 years and we, you know, we decided to invest everything that we had in this place after a very long year and a half um, negotiation with the Bermierski family, it was no easy road to get here. Um, we have two kids, um, an 11 year old who goes to the French Academy, uh, but she was at PS3 for many years um, and a one year old baby. We wanted, we wanted them here uh, yeah. to meet to meet you guys, but uh, unfortunately, uh, we've had many sleepless nights. Our baby has been running a fever. <laughs> so right now, our 11-year-old is watching him. <laughs> They're hanging out downstairs. <laughs> um, but anyway, the proposal that's in front of you really represents uh, the community's needs, the property's history, um, as well as our immediate family's um, in our extended family's needs um, as we tend to make this our long-term home. So um, without further ado, I'll turn it over to Al. We put together a presentation to walk you through all the work that we've done and information that we have found. I mean, this is probably just a tip of the iceberg, but we put together a compilation of what we thought was important um, in terms of the, the, the designs and information that you'll be looking at today. All right, so that's me. Let me uh, let me know when you guys can see um, a two nineteen dash two twenty one Warren here on your screen. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. So, so Al, so, Al, and Victoria, before mm -hmm. you guys start, I just want to make sure this is just for the record. This is the same presentation that you guys sent earlier, and that has been distributed to the commission. It's nominally different in that we removed um, a lot of the words, but yes, it's, it okay. has the same, same pictures and we just kind of want to walk through it. Uh, I'll, I'll make it quick. I know you that you mentioned it. earlier you want to make it. Excuse me, just real quick. This is the court reporter, um, Ms. Al and Victoria. Please mm -hmm. watch stepping over one another, one speaker at a time. Thank you. Okay. okay. Just by okay. one. You just did it now. Okay, just kidding. <laughs> yes. I just want to make sure for the record, you guys didn't add any additional information. It's the same stuff, just kind of stuff taken out and reformatted. Exactly. Perfect. All right. Continue on. Sorry about that. Okay. So last time, I think that we all believed that there was a uh, residential nature to this property dating back to 1870. Uh, we, we did. We knew that it changed to commercial um, around 1938, but we decided to do a lot of uh, research. And so we met with John Beekman at the uh, Jersey City Public Library. And we also talked with Sal and Val um, Bromirsky. Sal and Val, who are the daughter, 
daughter and uh, and her husband of uh, Dorothy Bromirsky. And so we got some photographic evidence from them and learned a lot of what their story is. And so, um, and so we just want to share what it is that we found. So this first photo, it's um, around 1937-38. You can tell because uh, William Bromirsky, who is the little boy in the photo on the right, he was born in 1934. And so we estimate his age at about four. Um, and so it just shows uh, what this looked like, the signage that was here, and the fact that this was a commercial entrance in 1938. One thing that we also noticed in this picture is that a 223 Warren that they already had one over one windows here in 1937-38. And there's a sign well in the distance as well that looks a lot like our sign that we believe was at 231 Warren, which was used to be a funeral uh, home as well, I believe my wife found. Um, and so from talking with Sal and Val, they said that they believe their family bought the property in the 1920s from a dairy. Um, and so they even had a bottle of the dairy and it's hard to read, but you can see that it says a 221 Warren Street and also the name H. Barron's. Um, so we use that H. Barron's um, kind of as a clue, as a lead to try to find out what the commercial history of this property actually I do wanna was. I do wanna say one thing, which is, you know, back to the photo of young William Bramirsky yet yeah, this one here. So this was around 19... 34, we believe, based 37, 38, based on speaking with the family. And we understand that at that time, the property was already configured to reflect its current use as we know it today. Um, we do not have the 1938 tax records for this property. You know, obviously, nobody's fault. They all, nobody has them for this block, but just by deductive reasoning, it just leads us to believe that, um, you know, the photos that we're looking at represent what the property's condition or um, use was um, at the 1938 tax records stage. So they bought it from a Barron's, a dairy. And so we went and looked at the actual records, the commercial directories, um, they didn't have anything uh, post 1925, 26 in the time of record. Um, I, I forget exactly what John said, but he said they don't exist um, in 1927 um, for whatever reason. But as you can see here, so we looked for the Barons and we found that in the 25, 26, that this property was operating as a grocer. Um, and then we also found in 1918, it was still under Henry Barons um, and that it was operating as a milk or a dairy. Um, and in 1904, 1905, and this is when I was, I was surprised that it was going this far back, but here it was a grocer once again. We have a feeling that they were kind of interchanging dairy and grocer because milk is a grocery. Yeah. Um, and that's why it was switching back and forth. Um, and then going back to 1899, 1900, it's still operating this time Jacob Barron's, not a Henry Barron's, um, as a milk or dairy. And before that, in 1895-96, still a milk or dairy. Um, uh, and then going back even to 1893-94, we see it was still owned by the Barons as a milk or dairy. So it was pretty surprising to us, actually. We weren't expecting to see the commercial use on the property go that far back. We were really looking you know, around the, you know, early 1900s. So it was really interesting to see the directories go all the way back to 18, 1893 for the commercial use on this property. That, that said, in 1892-93, the Henry Barron's lead or the Barron's lead goes cold and we can't, we didn't find a uh, commercial directory and we didn't skim the entire book looking for our address. Um, and so we don't think there's a reason to think it was residential before that. It might've been right before in 1892, but we don't see any reason to see that. And in fact, we found that in 1867, 68, which is right around when the building was originally, um, originally built. I, I think John Beekman said it was built between 1850 and 1870. And because of these directories, we know it was between 1850 and 1867, 68, because we have a directory listing here. Um, so one thing to note, though, is that the street numbers changed um, in, from 1867 to now. And so we included it here the key that they provided um, to show that the numbers were between for Sussex to Grand 
were between 100 and 117. Um, and we also have a map to back it up, but the map is really hard to read and that's that we thought the key would be more useful. And so in the corner here, um, with what is currently the empty parking lot at 215, that's 101. And then it goes on 217 is 103, 219, 105, 107, et cetera. Um, and, and so this is an 1868 map provided to us by uh, John Beekman at the JC Public Library. And so we actually found that in 1867, 68, that there was a commercial nature of the entire block. Um, and so I, we, we found five of them that at 103 um, Warren or modern 217, it was a grocer, traveler, fancy goods. Our at 221, it was a broker. Uh, before that, uh, and then one, 223, dry goods, jeweler, architect, clerk, and bookkeeper. And I have no reason not to think that we couldn't have found one or two more commercial uses here. Um, the problem is that we, a lot of this was just from skimming the book, looking for Warren Street, and there, it, it's a big book. Um, so it was not the most effective way of finding it. And it was still, we found that five out of, um, five out of nine of the lots on our side of the street um, were commercial uses. So we'll, we'll turn it over to Jeff, who will talk to you a little bit more about some of the changes since we were here last. Unless any of you have any questions. Do any of the commissioners have any questions or comments on what was just presented? Thank you for that fascinating research. Thank you. All right. Sounds good to go, guys. Take it away, Jeff. All right. A little less exciting, I think, than the, the history. Um, so following the last um, meeting, we, we sort of had seven comments that we took away, our, our suggestions or, or things that were um, required a, a deeper look. So the first were the windows on the back, the fourth story um, of the existing building. The second was the proposed uh, design of the stoop. The third was the proposed design of the pediment or the entryway going into 219. The fourth was the front basement door, that sort of middle uh, entrance uh, at 221. The fifth were whether or not the window should be one over one um, on the front of the building. Uh, the sixth was the presence um, or design, I should say, and materiality for the water table uh, at that lower basement level. And then the seventh item that came up was um, a garden and fence uh, suggestion for the front of the building. So just to go through those one by one, um, we went back and looked at everything. Uh, we spoke with you know, our clients, of course. We spoke with um, Diane from the Neighborhood Association uh, and Maggie. And I'll take them one at a time. The rear addition, I'm sorry, with the windows on the rear, the fourth floor. The, you know, the, the concern I believe was that from Sussex, the top four um, would be visible and that altering those windows would be detrimental to the, to the um, you know, integrity of the original building. What was suggested at the time was possibly um, changing the windows at 220, I'm sorry, 219, um, back to the original openings um, keeping the sort of width and the height of them as is, maybe extending them down to the, to, um, the deck level for access to the deck. So we, we actually took that um, to heart and have gone back and are showing those openings as essentially the existing openings in terms of width and height. And then in the one case uh, coming down as a door on the back, and then in the one adjacent to it coming down as a full height window on the back. Um, I'll show you that in elevation as well. So here's the existing opening remaining as is, the existing opening extending now as a door, the existing opening extending now as a large window. The windows at 221, which are less visible from Sussex, um, maybe not at all really, uh, we're proposing a large opening here, similar to what we had before, um, trying to open this up and give more light um, to the, um, 
to that living room on the fourth floor and access to that deck. So that was the first item that we addressed and we did take that to heart and make those changes. And we're showing you those here tonight. Um, the other thing I wanna point out in the context of these changes is that while they are, well, 219 is visible um, partially from Sussex at this point, it's our understanding that a building will be built eventually at 215. I think um, plans are already underway for that project. Um, and likely that view will be obscured in the relatively near future. However, we did want to take the commissioners or the commission's uh, comments to heart. And so we're proposing those changes tonight. The second item I wanted to address was the, um, the stoop uh, at the front of the building for 219. There was concern about the design of the stoop in terms of the, uh, the sides, the steps, the profile, the guardrail, if you'll recall, um, as well as the pediment uh, and the entryway. So what we're proposing after much, much work <laughs> and measurements, uh, we actually went down and measured um, the building at the end or two in from the end close to grand, their um, entryway um, pediment and match the measurements. And what we're proposing tonight is actually recreating that entryway. That was the guidance we were given. Um, that's the guidance our clients are comfortable with. We're, right now we're calling it out as a cast stone um, product, but we want to work with Maggie more closely on the details, um, provided this is acceptable to the commissioners. But the idea would be to more or less match what's it, I believe 229 uh, Warren um, for the entryway pediment. For the stoop, we removed the side, the low walls that we had shown previously. So you'll read the side profile of those treads as you, and risers as you go up. We also changed the design of the guardrail. If you'll recall, we had a more modern sort of web net type product um, indicated. We're picking up on the design of some of the fencing as you go down the street with the sort of arch tops and the small circles in between. And so we're trying to do something that is reminiscent of some of the, the, the fencing that you see um, but uh, you know, suited toward the, uh, the stoop application. So for you know, those were points two and three, this, the design of the stoop and the design of the entryway pediment. Um, those we've worked, worked out. We've, um, you know, Maggie's seen these, Diane from the Neighborhood Association has seen these. Um, as I understand it, everyone's comfortable with what we're proposing, um, at least uh, those parties. So those were items one, two, and three. Um, the other items that were, that came up that were of concern, the, the big conversation, uh, if you'll recall, surrounded this doorway into 221 Warren. This is the doorway that um, previously entered into the funeral home uh, office, I believe it was. And as Al pointed out in his testimony, um, it appears that this door and this storefront have been used for over a century now. Uh, as a commercial, uh, you know, venue or use. And so upon reflection, you know, it's our thinking that this store actually um, is historically significant uh, to the use of that building over time. Um, our client originally did want to keep that door in terms of the layout of the unit and access to the unit. And so it, it suits the use um, or the, the subsequent use of the building. Um, but we think it also kind of harkens back to the the commercial history of the building. And so our thinking was that that door should actually stay um, as it is now. And similar with the water table and the proposal or the suggestion, I should say, to change the materiality below the water table. Um, it's our thinking that the brick was likely there given the, the windows in the door. Um, and that since they're really not interested in changing any of that, there's probably no reason to come back and plaster over that. That was something that had been talked about. Um, the windows, again, you know, if, if you go back and look at the photos that Al shared, uh, there is evidence of one over one windows back in the 1830s, I'm sorry, the 1930s. And so the thinking here is that their preference would be to do the one over one. It seems appropriate given uh, what would have been there uh, at that time, or at least consistent with some of the, the other buildings there. And so the proposal remains one over one windows. And then the final thing that came up uh, was the garden kind of uh, fencing in front. And the thinking at this point is that they would like to go ahead and install the stoop here to create access to 219. 
at this time, they're not proposing any other changes out here. So there would be no additional uh, fencing or garden space for now. If that's something that, you know, over the course of uh, design development comes out of, that they would like to do, we'll certainly bring it back to Maggie and to the commission if needed. But at this time, there's no uh, additional changes to the, to the front of the building uh, beyond the new stoop for 219. <clears throat> So I think I've covered everything, Alan, Victoria, did I miss anything that we discussed? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, I don't think so. And so uh, Maggie and commissioners, I'm, I'm open to hearing any of your thoughts or questions. Uh, and, and if you want me to go through any other aspects of the project, I'm happy to. One thing I actually do want to point out is there is a slight layout change. Um, and I'm not sure it's all that important for you guys, but the first four, uh, and second floor of the duplex at 221, the layout has changed slightly. You'll notice that we're incorporating an elevator or we're showing an elevator incorporated. The logic behind the elevator here, this is something that um, Alan Victoria had wanted to get into later on in the design process with us, but we, we pushed it up because it's actually, I think, important in terms of our understanding of this entryway um, or the, our keeping this entryway to the, um, the duplex unit there. This elevator is intended as, uh, you know, a easier means of access to their unit, which would be the top two floors uh, for older family members uh, who you know, won't be able to make the journey of three, three, four flights of stairs. So this was something that we had talked about early in the process. We just hadn't shown in the plans. So we're showing it here tonight because I do think it is relevant um, and it, it helps sort of make the argument for keeping um, you know, both entrances at this level. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, do we have any Questions for Jeff from the commission. Um, I have a question, Commissioner Guchardo. Um, you referenced 229 Warren as your source for the design of the pediment. Um, is 229 a building that you're saying is similar period? Why did you choose that particular building for the pediment? Yeah. Good question. It's our understanding that it is of the, you know, it would, would have been built at a similar time or at the same time, roughly. Um, <clears throat> based on our conversations with Diane from the Neighborhood Association, she felt that that was probably the best representation uh, of what would have been there originally. And so is probably the best model uh, for a new pediment. Okay. And I my other question. Oh, sorry, I, I can just chime in there too. We also found a, we found a very clear historic photo of that pediment as well, which confirms that the one that's currently existing was at least mostly intact and that it would be a good model for them to work off of. Okay. Um, the second question involves the stairs and the, uh, if I look, if I read your drawing correctly, you're proposing a modern interpretation of the railing using um, original material as inspiration. Is that correct? Uh, Commissioner, you're referring to the new, the yes. new guardrail? Yeah, that's right. Yes. Yep. So my question is why there's obviously a lot of period material available. Uh, why, would you, why would you create a modern interpretation versus something that would, that's available that would actually fit the period of the building? Um, so yeah, this was less meant to be a modern uh, interpretation. This was really derived from, A, from comments from the last uh, meeting, which directed us to look at some of the fencing along the way as a good model of what would have been appropriate uh, at the time. And then the scale of those um, openings in the fencing are so large that they wouldn't meet current code. And so the proportions have had to change a bit in order to, you know, to meet the building code and and the, uh, the uh, opening size requirements. But the, the logic is the same in terms of these sort of arched uh, repeating openings. And so I guess that's a modern interpretation in a way just to make code, but really it's meant to be um, more appropriate or uh, accurate to the period. But, but yeah, I actually, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I actually believe that this particular design exists on a couple of streets down from us. And I didn't think this would come up. I would have taken a picture for um, for the board, but this particular design, I personally have seen around our neighborhood with the, you see with the I circles? Believe, I believe yeah, on those with blocks. With the circles, yes. yeah, on this block. 
Yeah, no, this this is a fairly common. I'm sure the commissioners have seen similar things. I think the difference here, what I'm trying to point out is that oftentimes the gap between those verticals are larger than what would pass current code. Um, mm. And so we've just tightened that up a bit. Right, but, you, but you're having an iron worker fabricate this design, correct? Uh, that would be correct. Or you, yeah. so, and you're not referencing historic catalogs or any of that. This is a, a creation, right? Correct. Right. So my point is, is it's still going to read as a modern railing? Um, and my, my initial reaction to it is there are railings that represent this particular period or come pretty close that are similar in design to this, uh, but actually are recreating closer to historic fabric. Just a thought. And the other thing I noticed here is there's no newel post at the base of the stairs either which is, I guess, more of a modern interpretation as well. I would imagine that in the original building, there would have been a newel post at the base. Yeah, you're probably right there, Commissioner. Um, and as, as with all things like this, these sorts of details, we're happy to work with Maggie um, to iron it out if that's something you're open to. Um, you know, we, we're, we're flexible on this. I, I, I maybe in one of the photos that was presented of the his history of the building, I think there was, I, I'm not sure, but I believe there was a shot of a railing in that, in that photograph, in one of those photographs that you presented earlier. Okay. Yeah, that's right. That's the same railing that's currently on the building. Yeah. Ah. Uh, mm -hmm. Jeff is I had just one question for Jeff, and that was um, regarding the elevator. Um, have you detailed how that's going to end it in the roof line? And is it going to project up from the roof line? And if so, is there a, a, a view shot of that? Yeah, so we haven't, we haven't worked all that out yet, Commissioner. Our, our thinking is that given the um, height of the building, that could be a hydraulic elevator requiring minimal rooftop uh, equipment, if any. And so, you know, well, if it does require any sort of um, significant or visible rooftop uh, structure, we would certainly bring it back to the commission for review. Um, but our intent would be to work through it with Maggie and make sure we're not doing something that would be visible. Okay. Our goal is to keep it all off the roof. Right. So you wouldn't be adverse to having that as a condition of approval that it and not be visible from the public right of way as it stands right now. As it stands, yeah. And if it needs to be, then we'll we'll come back to the commission as uh, Maggie deems necessary. I was also going to mention that I noticed, and I think it was the 1934 photograph that um, uh, the um, the applicant um, provided um, shows a pediment on. It looks like the building two doors down, right over the right shoulder of the. <clears throat> people standing mm -hmm. you can see and it, and it appears to be the same pediment that you've shown so it just kind of verified it for me that was it for me though okay thank you thank you are there any other questions All right, so okay, here, we want to move on. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jeff, Alan, Victoria, does that conclude your testimony? That does. Yep, we'll go ahead and stop. Sure. Yes. Great. All right. So you want to open and close public comment? Well, on this application. Yeah. Are there any members of the public in attendance who would like to speak regarding this applicant? Okay, we have one. Um, why don't we make a motion to open public comment? Motion. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor. Aye. 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 Diane, I'm going to promote you and we'll swear you in.
and you should be able to unmute yourself. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. Thanks. Diane, can you please raise your right hand? Do you swear our firm to tell the whole truth? Nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Thank you. Thank you. Spell your name for the record, like usual, please. <laughs> it's Diane, uh, one N, Case, K-A-E-S-E. And I live at 192 Washington Street. Uh, right. I just wanted to very quickly uh, note a couple of things for the commissioners. And that is that the block along Warren Street there appears to have been built um, with, uh, with the exception of the parking lot uh, right now. Uh, that appears to have been built all at one time from the evidence of the lintels that go the whole way across there and the historic photos. Um, if you go to historic photos of the parking lot, it, that appears to be a different building built at a different time. And I have to be honest and haven't checked any of the uh, maps, so I can't confirm that, but that's what it looks like. What's also interesting is that this is the only place in Paulus Hook that appears to have cast iron lintels. Um, not only over the windows, but over the doors, over the pediment over the doors. So um, we will continue to work with uh, uh, Jeff and um, Victoria and Al and see how we can uh, continue to refine that pediment and get more detail on that pediment. Because I know that we've also talked to some of the other neighbors there and they are interested in adding more detail to their pediments also so that it becomes more uh, appropriate along there. So. It's an unusual situation and um, from a historic standpoint, and uh, we're, we're really looking forward to this. We think that they've done a great job. I'm really happy with the history research that they've done. And I think they've come up with a good way of, of approaching the building for the time being. And I think this is phase one and um, hopefully we'll see some more phases as we go down the road in the future. So thank you, appreciate the efforts to date and we support it from a historic preservation, this historic policy association standpoint. Great, thanks, Diane. You're welcome. Okay. Moving you back to attendee. All right, there are no other members of the public in attendance. So with that being Motion. said, there, yep. Motion there to close. <laughs> Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so we can move into the staff comments. Staff comment. All right, so per the staff, so we sent out a revised staff report this morning. Um, nothing too crazy. We noted, of course, the ownership change, the new information that they submitted. Um, basically, just we we went through this last time when we were looking at the project. Um, staff is supportive of the project as proposed. Um, the, we. We discussed in the last one, the rear addition is larger than we typically see proposed, but it is two buildings um, and it is consistent with the rest of the additions on the row and adjacent buildings. Um, regarding the requested changes to the front facade and what the applicant came back with, um, we're, we're fully supportive of keeping the facade intact as is um, and not changing below the water table as was um, requested. I think the amount of research that the property owners put into this application is not something that we typically see. And without, frankly, without that documentation, we might have made a mistake that would have altered the building and had an adverse effect. So I, I really do thank them for the effort that they put into this and they made it very clear that we should keep the bottom of the building intact as is and keep the commercial history of the row as intact as is physically possible. So that being said, um, we do recommend the approval of a certificate of appropriateness with the following conditions. Um, I also have a couple written down that we can add in at the end. So we do have our standard conditions from number four to number nine. Um, the new conditions that we added that are not our standards are the first one that the applicant and their architect shall continue to work with HPC staff and other relevant parties. Um, Diane has been very involved in this and I wanted to make sure that she stays involved um, regarding the new front door pediment um, for review and approval, of course. And then we have what is becoming a standard condition at this point, but that there's uh, to just kind of watch the foot candles for the rear lighting in the back. 
The third condition um, in the material book, Jeff, the WebNet stuff is still there. I didn't see it on the plan set anywhere. Yeah, no, my apologies. That's a holdover from before. So that's fine. That, that will be removed. Yep, that's not a big deal. And then the two other ones that I've taken from testimony tonight, um, we can add in a condition that no part of the elevator shaft or its associated mechanical equipment on the roof shall be visible from any public right of way. So we'll cover that and make sure that's not visible and that the applicant shall work with HPC staff to continue to revi uh, refine the railing at 219 Warren as presented. Are there any questions for staff? <clears throat> um, Maggie, am I, uh, can I still make a comment about the pediment yeah. um, situation? Okay, yeah. so um, I don't know what the earliest photograph anyone has been able to find about the pediment on any of the row of that um, Warren Street, but I found a photograph from 1919 of the corner building, which still has its two over four windows and the original pediment, I believe, on the building. Um, you can clearly see the cast iron top that everyone is talking about and the lentils over the windows. If I can share this with you, it's just on my phone, but um, where am I? No, 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 no. Here we go. Here we go. No. Nope. Well, is, that, is that the one in my email? That's, that's the one in your email. Okay. Give me a second. So we, I, I can okay. just, I can just pull it up. Um, that way we, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't appreciate your methods. <laughs> you can do a little bit better. Thank you. Actually, the wind, the parlor windows are four over six um, in this photograph. But um, I'm more interested in the pediment design, being that Diane said that a lot of the row uh, were looking to change their pediments. Um, I think this might be more of an original pediment than 229 has currently. Okay, so Bridget, we're going to mark this photo as B1, corner of Warren and Grand. If you want, um, B1 is the... Uh, oh, sorry, B2. B2. Take us B2. Mm -hmm. All right, Paul, this is the photo you're talking about, right? That's the photo, correct. So if you if you blow up, if you can, the pediment, you see that there's actual brackets, you know, um, it looks more like the houses on Jersey Avenue by Hamilton Park that have a pedimented cast iron lentil, um, you know, with a decoration at the top. The ones on Jersey, I want to say six, um, 665 or 667, somewhere over there. Um, but anyway, this photograph, it's pretty clear um, the type of pediment that may have been across the whole row, given this is a 1919 picture. Um, so I don't know if that's more exciting or less exciting to the applicants and to Diane, but um, I think it's pretty clear that it's a you know, was had corbels on it of some sort. That's something I think we could certainly work with the applicant to include at the staff level. Okay. I mean, and, and given that Diane had said the other homeowners are interested in, you know, um, restoring their pediments, um, I just thought it might be interesting for them to, to have that information. Uh, for the wooden door that's being replaced below the water table, the one that's further to the north, I believe, that, that's not going to be covered up by the stoop. Um, do we have the detail for that door? I'm not, I don't think it's being replaced. Yeah, Commissioner, are you the, um, the door at 219 or 221? Let me pull up the. Uh, it's two twenty one. 
It's it's the um it's the the it's the one that's between it's the um it was the entrance to the office that's being this replaced, one here correct? yes yeah we are calling it as a new uh, wood door I mean typically what we've done with these commissioner is um, put together or you know uh, obtain the shop drawings from the mill worker uh, and then run those by Maggie prior to uh, fabrication. We have the details for this store included. I'm sorry, this store. Um, and I imagine that this would be similar in construction uh, profiles, all of that. All right, so Maggie, if you're comfortable with that, can we just ensure that you have a chance to look at that? 100%. That's. Uh... Uh, we typically cover conditions like that. Um, let me pull up the staff report just so I can make sure it's noted for the record. Um, that's covered under condition number seven for specifications, material submissions, not currently submitted to and approved by. Um, that's typically where we get that information from and how we get it. So that's what we'll be doing here. Perfect. Thank you. No problem. Any other questions from commissioners? Thank you. Could you just pull up the um, the conditions again, just so? Sure. Just do one last read through. All right. So conditions. We have the first three are not our standard conditions. Number four through number nine are standard conditions. And then Austin, when you're ready or when the commission is ready, I can just verbally read in the other two conditions that we added from our discussion. Yeah, I, I think that number, I mean, I appreciate um, the, the way you phrased it, Jeff. The um, when you said it, it, you know, it's right now it's listed as cast stone, um, but that's going to be something that we continue to work with. And just given Commissioner Amatuzo's photo, you know, maybe the wording of number one can say, you know, uh, continue to work with HPC staff and other relevant parties on the design and materiality uh, and ornamentation of the new front door pediment. And to review subsequent uh, mock-ups, etc. I, I I think that the condition just should just be should just be clear that you know it's not just a mock-up of the design is drawn, but that the the materiality and ornamentation will continue to evolve, and that the commission is comfortable with that. I'm comfortable with that. That's a good update to the phrasing. Anyone else have any comments on that? Any commissioners, I mean. All right. Awesome. Did, did, you, did you have any further comment on the on the cast iron? Did you want anything in there on that? I know that Jeff had said that they were going to work on that. Maybe willing to work with staff. Is that something that we would want to add? To add in that it would be cast iron? Um, on the, um, the stair rail, the new stair rail. Oh. Yeah, can you clarify a little bit, Maggie? Is there, am I missing something? If there are examples of, if there are available uh, replications of railings from the period, is that preferable to creating something new that kind of has the, the feel? Is there a preference one way or the other? Is there a better, better way to go? Given the, railings on the block, which are frankly all over the place. I don't necessarily think that one is going to, like using a modern railing is going to cause an adverse effect. And I don't necessarily think that uh, replicating something is going to cause an adverse effect either. It's just, it, in staff's opinion, the railing as proposed here was a, it's something that is quite literally on the block two doors down. So we've considered it appropriate in the past and we were just considering it appropriate again. Um, however, if the commission would rather see a replication railing, I can add that onto the condition that we read into the record before 
that you'd prefer to see a historic railing replicated? Uh, the, the reason why I'm bringing it up is if so much effort is being made to create a pediment and um, an appropriate uh, lintel above the door, and, and you're going to, you know, a lot of extensive research to create something that's of the period, to then do a mod more modern interpretation on the railing feels like it's out of sync with the effort that's being made on the building. You know, we, uh, as a commissioner, we run into this all the time, you know, yes, the, maybe there's evidence of a one over one in 1938 uh, for that would, you know, allow a one over one on the building, but is that what was intended on the building? What are we, what is the applicant's trying to do? Are they trying to be historically correct? Are they just trying to meet the minimum requirement? So it's always a struggle as a commissioner to, to see something consistent applied to all aspects of the building. So if we're going for 1938 for the windows, but we're looking to go further back and more accurate on the pediment, and then, you know, how, then the railings are being treated from a different context, I always, I'm concerned about how that's all going to come together. You know, is it the best solution to go out it, go at it that way? I'd rather have one context for the whole building and approach it the same for all the materials. Commissioner Gutierrez, uh, given the stated intent of basically taking the, um, taking the, the design of the period and making a code compliant, I think um, if the commission wants it to be more accurate to the period, I think it's incumbent upon us to clarify what aspects of the of that of that jump from the you know literal replication to you know um, to what will be built. I think it's incumbent upon us to say, well, here's the parts that hasn't quite made it yet. So, for example, the newel posts, right? I, I think we, mm -hmm. I think if we have, to, if we're asking them to bring it to a more, a more literal um, replication state, but still meeting code, we have to be clear on, on, or you know, at least list the elements that that we that we see falling short. Well, I, um, I, I don't think code compl I know the code compliance got raised, but there are plenty of fabrications or replications that are code compliant. It's I don't think that's an issue. Um, I know it was raised uh, by the architect, but there's plenty of ways to achieve the result and be code compliant as well. Yeah. But I, right, but I, but I guess what I'm saying is if, if, the, if the applicant's understanding of what we're asking for is not code compliant, and we're saying that actually there are, you know, versions out there that are, mm -hmm. um, I think we have to point them to that. I see. So you're saying we'd have to make a specific recommendation to them. Otherwise, otherwise they're going to come, come away from this meeting going, they want to look and feel, but I don't know what they want, you know? And, and so yeah. I, I think- No, that's understandable. I, I'm just drawing from previous applications. There's plenty of uh, replication material out there that's similar to what's Mm -hmm. in the neighborhood, in similar period houses. So uh, can, can we demand that they go to that? Probably not, but they're choosing a modern alternative. I, I just wanna be consistent about the context for the building rather mm -hmm. than pick and choose what's convenient. You know? I agree. Yeah. But you know, uh, it, you know, Maggie has said that uh, she feels comfortable with the application. That it's uh, that it, it's not going to be uh, doing any harm. The choices that they've made. Um, so I understand that as well. I, I obviously just expressing some preferences here. I, I do, and Stephen, I do agree with you, especially. And I, I don't look at this from a code compliance standpoint. Right. So. Kind of just that we're just debating whether or not which type of railing is the most appropriate right now. The code compliance isn't factoring in for me. Okay. So if there's going to be some exploration into a null post, I would ask that there be some consideration made for the railing material as well at the same time. Um, 
and there's plenty of evidence in the, in the neighborhood on similar period buildings for code compliant replications versus modern interpretation. That's just a suggestion, not a demand. So is just to make sure I'm all I'm understanding this, because of course we're remaining it to staff, is your main concern the railing or the new old post? Well, it's both. Well, okay. It, okay. It, it's it's both. Okay. They should be they should be thought through together and should work well together. Okay. Got it. Okay. So based on that, we have the two conditions that we're adding that were read into the record. Um, we have the conditions listed in the staff report with an amendment to condition number one to read that the applicant and their architect shall continue to work with HPC staff and other relevant parties to review the design materiality and ornament of the pet of the front door pediment for HPC staff review and approval um, and also to prepare mock-ups of the new pediment. Those are the conditions that we have. Do any commissioners have any comments or questions on any of those? Okay. Um, again, staff recommendation is to review the, is to approve the certificate of appropriateness with the conditions on the staff report and right into the record. Ask if the applicants are comfortable with the- oh, Yeah, we usually do yeah. after motion. Um, then motion to approve uh, the application with conditions as set forth by staff. Okay. Second, Gordon. Um, Jeff, Alan, Victoria, are you comfortable with the conditions as read into the record? Yeah, yes. we're comfortable, Maggie. We'll, we'll, uh, we're happy to work with you on this. Okay. All right, so then we'll move to a roll call vote. Um, Commissioner Gordon. Aye. Commissioner Amatuza. Aye. Commissioner Sakam. Aye. Commissioner Lewis. Aye. Commissioner Gucciardo? Aye. Commissioner Gunther? Aye. Commissioner Pepin? Aye. Okay, Commissioner Tagliarini is absent. Chairman Blazek is absent. Um, Vice Chair Sandkamp? Aye. Okay, there are eight votes in favor, none against, no abstentions. The certificate of appropriateness is granted. Thank you very much for your time tonight. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Thank everyone. You. Thank you. Thanks for the history lesson. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> we have more where that came from. <laughs> Excellent research, guys. Yeah. Yeah. So if we are if only all our item. applications had, had this kind of presentation, you know, these meetings would be amazing. <laughs> They'd also Good. probably go a lot quicker. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we still have all another right. item on the agenda. We have new business, yep. and that is um, uh, item number nine, um, sub. Uh, item number A, introduction, discussion, and adoption of the 2022 Historic Preservation Commission calendar. And, uh, all right. Anyone have any questions? We should have all that? received a copy. Yeah. We did, um, you know, like our usual, we went through, check to make sure we're not on any holidays, check to make sure we're not on any Jewish holidays either. Um, and looks like we're pretty good. Anyone have any questions on any of the dates? Any concerns with any of the dates? I don't think we're near Thanksgiving again, like that one year. I see that we have two months that have two meetings each, uh, April and October. Looks like everything else is just one meeting. Is that yep, right? following the same schedule as usual, 14 a year. Um, so we uh, need a motion to uh, approve. Just to adopt the calendar. Adopt, yeah. Anyone? Motion to adopt the calendar. Second. Second. Okay, I heard Kelly. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very cool. Calendar is adopted. Okay, and then now item number B is introduction, discussion, and adopt, adoption of the 2022 Historic Preservation Commission Stenographic Services Agreement. Um, so this is, we did this last year as well. Um, this is just our agreement with Bridget so that she can continue to be the court reporter for our meetings. Um, it just helps that this, while I'll be honest, this is not technically necessary for the commission to do, 
but it speeds up getting Bridget a PO so that we can pay her timely. Um, so from a staff perspective, it's pretty important. Do you guys have any questions on this? Did the amounts change? Um, they did fluctuate slightly. The fee, the appearance fee did not go up, but the overtime fee went up. And Bridget, I believe one of the pages, page fee changed. 25 cents. Yeah. Wow. No, oh, I don't know then. It's, that's a just... bargain in this market. <laughs> and the appearance fee went up $5. Oh no, my not, God. Not 5%, $5. And that's oh, over wow. 50 years. I don't know if we can get, if we can squeeze that in, you know. <laughs> it's a tough. All right. Do you guys have any questions? No. If not, we can make a motion a to motion. adopt the agreement. Motion to approve. Second. Who is second? I'm sorry. I'm a two cell. I'm a two cell. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. The demographic services agreement is adopted. All okay, right. Number, item number 10, tabled cases. This this case has been on the agenda tabled since 2017. And I hate that I have an update on it, and it is the worst possible update. <laughs> They, they, emailed me, they emailed me back. They're still active. Wow. I gave, I, I gave them a deadline. They all responded back saying that they are actively working on it. So it's Can we safe. change our bylaws to say that you can only table a case for five years? Is that <laughs> I, I mean, they would or only a have year, I think, would be appropriate, wouldn't it? I also agree that I think that would be appropriate. Things, Liz, things, that might be. Can go yourself. on. Things can go on longer than a year. I've been there. <laughs> yeah. And I'll miss not seeing it on the agenda. I've kind of comforting now <laughs> to see it there. Every, every, <laughs> What's going to happen when eventually that spot is there? <laughs> yeah. um, uh, when we introduction of, on that? Uh, oh, one speaker. Go ahead. Introduction uh, and discussion of resolutions is needed. Anything? Nope. nope. Memorialization of resolutions? Nope. Uh, executive session is needed? Nope. So we're ready to adjourn. Do I have a right. motion? Good motion adjourn. to adjourn. Second. Anyone? Second. All Thank right. you all. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Happy holidays, everybody. Happy yeah. holidays. Yeah. Happy yeah. holidays. Yeah. Happy yeah. holidays. Yeah. Thank, Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. See you all next year. Yeah. 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 Exactly. See you all next year. Yeah. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night.